everyone, Brian Balon here, and I wanna take you through some of the equipment that I use to record these videos. And it's actually not as complicated as you think. Um, even right now, I use my phone. A lot of my videos are used by my, my iPhone 7 Plus. That's all you really need, but uh, if you wanna go uh, you know, to doing different things, I'm gonna open up the horizon, if you will, and the possibilities, then some of these things I'll show you can do that. 100% of my videos I've done myself and uh, not hired anybody, Not I've edited all of it, uh, I've recorded all of the things, I've did the audio, so, you know, I'm coming from zero experience doing video to getting to where I'm at now, and I'm constantly improving things, so just want to share this with you guys, so, um, you know, I'm kind of taking you along my journey about how I'm, I'm developing as a filmmaker, a YouTube content creator, um, somebody, vlogs have been doing that recently, real estate, of course, still growing that, and marketing, so... It's been exciting for me and I uh, want to share this with you so that you can stay in the loop. First piece of equipment that I'm using is a Canon 70D. I bought this a couple years ago and absolutely love it. I've thought about selling it many times and I have it and I'm glad I didn't because this thing is pure gold. I use this for my highest production video. It shoots 1080p at 30 frames a second. It's kind of outdated now. Um, they have, I think there's an 80D. They, you know, Canon has like Mark 1, Mark 2 basically like Iron Man suit kind of names, but I mean, you know, Canon's Canon brand name kind of thing. Some say and some would argue that Canon uh, just may not have the best equipment because it's just the brand name's kind of like Ferrari. Ferrari's not, you know, some people can argue a Ferrari is just as fast as a $40,000 car, but at the end of the day, you're, it's a Ferrari versus a not Ferrari, you know, $40,000 car. But to me, I love my Canon 70D and uh, the pictures I shoot with it, fantastic. I use, I take pictures and photos, real estate photos, car photos, I use it for a lot of things, but I'm super happy with it. Uh, and uh, yeah, for high production stuff is what I use this one for. The next thing is, this is a, called a 360 fly. Uh, it's basically a, a 360 degree camera. And I, I tried it out, you know, I looked at some of the reviews, and I thought about maybe I could try this out. So I bought it about 200 bucks on Amazon and uh, it's got a built-in mic and a 360 degree camera. It's not actually 360 degrees, it's probably 270. But the key about this is one, it's one lens. And so one camera, one lens. Uh, so it, it gets 270, so it's about this here. So you, if you're going to record something, you wanna make sure that everything you wanna record is is uh, above this this glass point or at least so the camera can catch it problem with this though is that piece of glass i don't know if you can see it there but there's a little chip yeah you can see it on the side there's a chip there i dropped it i'd mounted it onto my motorcycle to use it and the, the suction cup came off and it fell on the ground chipped it 80 dollars to replace and you know what i'm probably just not going to replace it and sell this or do something with a hold on maybe i'll replace it sometime but you know, I actually have tried to use it and just hadn't had a good experience overall with that. But um, had some really innovative stuff I wanted to do with it too. So I might have to do a different kind of 360 camera because the quality was okay at best. This is one of my favorites is the GoPro Hero 5 Black Edition. They just went on sale $100 less. But this thing is gold. I mean, I use it even for... Uh, just you know videos that I do with with voice I, I plug in into USB uh, USB C yeah USB C port right there and have an adapter for audio jack for a mic jack so that I can record better audio because this thing doesn't pick it up very well without it so that's what I recommend but this is very versatile you throw it right on this and you have kind of like a selfie stick you can just kind of carry it around and very easy to do mounts on the car real easy Outside, uh, I'm not taking car videos with this thing. Uh, I may even buy a second one, but I highly recommend this. Downside to it, that because the Hero 6 is out now, but the Hero 5 has very, very good uh, quality for what you're getting for like $300. Now you have access to a 4K camera. The uh, This phone, the iPhone 7 that I record with, which I also record with videos and things like that, can do 4K as well. But this can do 4K at like, I think it's 30 frames. Uh, I'd be I'd be shocked if it could do 60 frames a second at 4K. Uh, I think the Hero 6 can do that 
4K at 60 frames. This is probably 4K at 30. And I think the iPhone 7 is 4K at 30 frames, I believe. But really good stuff. This is you know very small, versatile, can do point of view shots. A lot you can do with it, so pretty cool stuff. Here's some audio kind of material. This is a directional mic that I mount onto the top of my DSLR, the Canon 70D. And surprisingly, it takes fairly decent audio. Uh, I just don't like going too far away because then it starts to sound like I'm far away. Uh, but it does pick up very well, you know, shockingly, you know, five feet, six feet away. It still sounds pretty well. Did a, a video with a guitar on it five to six feet away outside and it picked it up like, you know, it was inside and the, the sound quality was fantastic. So Rode uh, is, you know, pretty well known in the audio realm. Amazon, I picked this up from Amazon. A lot of the stuff I picked up on Amazon. So, uh, so yeah, Rode's, uh, I forget what it's called, but, uh, you know, it's pretty much the, one of the top rated ones there. I bought this Tascam DR05 several years ago along with the Canon uh, 70D. I don't use it too much because uh, I don't want to have to sync audio uh, between two devices. Because if I record this, it's a separate recording device. Lapel goes on top here and then attaches to the person. But then I have to take the file and I have to take the video file and merge them together, which there are software like you know Final Cut Pro. Uh, can do that automatically. You can kind of render both together and analyze and kind of line them up. But I haven't actually done that, and I don't actually want to go that route. Apparently, this sounds really good. But um, yeah, I, I've stick to the road so far. But I have it just in case. You know, if I'm going to be you know in situations where I'm going to do very high quality stuff, which is coming soon, I'll, I'll probably use that so that I get the best audio quality as well as this for audio as backup or scratch audio so that I can render them together. Lenses for the 70D. So I got, well, I'll start with the basic. These are the two stock ones, if you will. Um, this is kind of a, um, as you can see, it's 18 to 55, kind of a short range uh, lens. And uh, now you have a 55 to 250 millimeter, uh, much longer range. And I actually hardly use this because, um, you know, I'm not a, you know, I'm, I'm not doing anything that would necessarily require that. Then again, I'm super. Uh, I have so much to learn with with cameras and stuff. But maybe at some point I'll realize I need to use this. But this is what I use for my shots, uh, for the, the high production stuff. And then um, this one is one of my favorites. Actually, this is a Sigma wide angle lens. I think it's 12 to 20 millimeter. Um, yep, yeah, tw or 10 to 20 millimeter. Wow. 10 to 20 millimeter, and this thing is uh, fantastic. I mean, I take a lot of cool shots there um, with that and uh, changes the camera. I mean, the camera itself, the body, is already pretty high-end, pretty self-sufficient, 22 megapixel um, camera, and adding the wide-angle lens changes things, uh, makes it look way, way better. Uh, these are called Gorilla Pods. The, it has it's cool because it actually has a leveler. I think this one has a leveler too somewhere. Probably maybe uh, no, actually that's surprising. Well, uh, actually I think it does. It just oh, it's it's attached to. You know what? Let me get it out real quick. I think I yeah, it's somewhere in here. Yeah. Okay. There it is. It's the mounting piece that goes underneath your camera. It has a leveler, but these have levelers um, that these can adjust, you know, pretty much to wrap around poles, to wrap around the environment so that it could be uh, in unique areas. This one is for the GoPro, smaller. This one's for DSLR. I think you can handle up to like two and a half pounds, something like that. This is, of course, the GoPro is like ounces, maybe. No, if anything, uh, yeah, ounces, less than a pound for sure. So, uh, but really neat to use, uh, cool selfie stick. You know, you can kind of like move it around yourself or you could shoot environmental like that. The GoPro is really small, so having to move it around, you know, it's, I guess you could get better feel, grip, and you know, you hold it closer to the base and can get 
a decent shot there. This uh, I got recently and probably use it if I'm if I'm using a desk or something uh, to just get closer shots and higher production, closer shots that don't involve my my camera um, or my my phone. I mean. And lastly, this is I have two tripods, but this one is a Manfrotto tripod, and I really like it. Um, I, you know, it's pretty sturdy. I think that's one of the keys. You want it to be sturdy because if it's outside in the wind, you don't want it to get tossed around. And this is pretty easy to use. One lever loosens to go down and up, and the other loosens to go uh, side to side. But overall, uh, it's a good tripod. My only complaint is that whenever you lift this up, it tends to want to close and it doesn't hold its position very easily. So you're constantly having to readjust every time you move the tripod, which not a big deal, but it'd be nice if these had, you know, they're more secure so that it wouldn't be so hard to, you know, transfer because, you know, you're taking shots on the tripod, you need to transfer regularly. And that's key so but like it overall this is this bag the camera bag put all the materials in there all the camera equipment and i have a ton of memory cards in here a lot of like adapter cables and, and stuff like that suction suction cup that got the shot adapter cables uh this is called they call this a dead cat it goes on the road mic and you can cancel out wind it does a pretty good job but if it's windier than like five to 10 miles an hour, which, you know, it's not much. Uh, it's Phoenix, so you don't get that much wind, except in the winter, it can get windy, but about five to 10 miles an hour, it can really reduce wind. Um, but after about 10, you start to hear some of the wind noise, which it still mitigates it enough to where you can probably edit it. But um, yeah, so that's another option there for outdoor recording, which I'd like to get into soon. But this bag is key. I can fit most of the stuff I need to in here. Extra batteries, memory cards. I mean, just pretty much handles most of my stuff. The last one I'll talk about is my phone. Uh, I have an iPhone 7 Plus. And yeah, there's an iPhone 10, there's an iPhone 8 now. But this thing is pretty solid for what it is. You can shoot 4K in it uh, at 30 frames, I think I was telling earlier. But... Yeah, this is, I mean, even if you didn't have anything else, you have just the iPhone 7 or, you know, iPhone even the 6 Plus, uh, 6S. I mean, you you have a decent, like, basically have almost everything you need. Uh, the video is pretty excellent quality. The audio itself actually is surprisingly good. Uh, the internal mics are pretty solid on this. And so sometimes I don't even edit. I don't even edit the sound or I don't use, you know, I don't need to use a, a jack or anything uh, because this is pretty solid enough. So I do this to get uh, really simple shots, more personal, and, um, you know, just to, to kind of be more, like, uh, less, less production quality kind of thing. But it, sometimes that's good. You might need that uh, if you're trying to... Uh, do something that you want people to have more personal touch, just kind of get to know you more. Less production can really help with personal connection. I don't know. So you tell me. Maybe you don't agree. Uh, but if you think professional is just a better overall thing, each one has its advantages, disadvantages. Yeah, I get it. But what do you think? You can let me know.